Hello everybody, this is my answer to JSON um, tutorial for uh, Corona SDK, for Level Helper to Corona SDK part 3, where he talks about uh, uh, a little bit of physics and uh, the camera and how to clone objects. So I'm going to try to replicate his tutorial. I'm going to add this object over here and um, now as you can see over here it has uh, static and uh, editor. Well, by editor it's the shape that was defined in the sprite atlas that uh, basically you you have over here when you create a sprite atlas from the project navigator and plus and choose uh, sprite atlas is over here so I'm gonna choose this shape but you can choose uh, other shapes as well you can create your own on, or uh, choose to have a rectangle or anything like that so I'm gonna drag this over here and uh, the first thing that popped uh, uh, as a question in the JSON tutorial was how do you snap and basically you go to the options over here and you enable snapping and uh, you can also change the grid size to whatever you want uh, default is uh, 64 or you can make it uh, bigger or smaller whatever you want and let's put it 32 and another thing that I didn't see in the uh, JSON tutorial was I didn't see him uh, zooming in or out so by uh, you zoom by um, pinching the trackpad or by holding option key and uh, on your mighty mouse you can uh, you scroll or if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse well you can use that also so uh, I just enabled snapping and as you can see over here now it snaps based on where the anchor point is and in the case where you have physics enabled let's disable physics the anchor point is always in the middle but uh, you can change it over here and it will snap based on uh, based on this point over here so let's put it back to middle and uh, let's keep it to no physics and I'm gonna put it over here and this is uh, one way of uh, cloning an object to copy it. You just command C and uh, command V to the last point you clicked. So if I click over here and command V, it will be copied over here. And you can clone it like that. And I can also remove this. And another uh, way to clone object is go to the clone nodes inspector over here, enable brush cloning. And now I can see the outlines of the of the object itself, and I can just click and hold and brush my way onto whatever I want to to brush. And when I'm done, I can see all these objects created. When I'm done and I'm satisfied with this, I click on Make Clones. And as you can see, all the objects have been uh, cloned and all are selected so that you can uh, move them and uh, put them uh, in place wherever, uh, wherever you want. Another way to clone object is to create a Bezier. And I'm going to hold control to click and uh, drag the points and uh, make my Bezier as I want. You can also click on a, on the line and uh, add more points or right click on a point and disable control points or um, delete the point entirely. So if I disable the control points over here, now I will have a straight line from this to this and I will have a, a rounded line between these two points. Now I have my Bezier, let me drag this object, you don't really need to drag it, I'm just going to select it and enable Bezier cloning. It will ask you what Bezier you want to use because uh, you may have multiple Bezier in your, in your scene. And I'm going to choose this. And by default, it will uh, just clone the object along the Bezier. It will not use any orientation or any angle offset. And you can clone by distance. So right now I'm cloning every 128 pixels. I can make it less. Or you can uh, clone by value. And now I have 10 clones or I can make it to have less clones and let's go by distance and enable orientation so when you enable orientation you can actually do uh, make the object itself follow the path and uh, let's make a smaller distance between the objects and I can create this uh, nice shape over here and if you use random angles it will create something like that it, it, it will rotate the object at a random angle or you can have an um, angle offset where based on the orientation it will add this uh, angle and uh, it will look uh, 
like it does right now and when you're satisfied click on make clones and now the clones are created and you can move them or leave them in place whatever you like let me remove the base gear over here and let's remove this part and now let me add this car tire over here because I want to demonstrate a camera so if I go in preview right now I don't have any shape on these objects now uh, Jason uh, actually repeated the tutorial because uh, uh, he didn't have on the first object he didn't have a, a shape so basically he removed everything and uh, recreated the, the um, recreated the the, sh the the scene now you don't have to actually do that you just select all the objects go to the physics inspector or whatever inspector you want whatever value you want to modify and whatever value you modify it will be modified on a, on all the objects that are in the current selection so I'm gonna choose static and I can choose to have the editor uh, the shape that was created in the sprite atlas editor or I can choose to have a rectangle and now if I go to simulate mode I can actually see the shapes and uh, uh, the tire also uh, simulating now let's create uh, go to the let's go to the C navigator and create the camera and you can place the camera wherever you like let's go to the camera inspector now the camera is not active so if I go to preview mode I will still see this area over here the active device but if I activate this camera now I will see whatever the camera sees so this is really nice because you can have multiple cameras in your scenes and you can switch between them to create in-game cinematics or anything like that uh, if you want to pay attention to the user to another area of your level you can just switch to that camera through the code and uh, the the player itself will see another area of your game so I have I activated the camera in preview mode I see what the camera is seeing as you can see over here it cuts this around I don't see the bottom part over here as you can see and uh, let's actually change the background color so that we can actually don't have white on white so I'm gonna go to options and I'm gonna choose this color now if I go to preview now I can see exactly what my area what my device will uh, will look like so let's follow the object I'm going to choose this and let's follow the car tire and what Jason did understand is why is the camera uh, jumping over here now you need to understand the important important area wide and height so this part over here is the important area I can make it bigger or smaller whatever I want and what this does is imagine that you have a player that walks from left to right if uh, I'm walking from left to right I want the camera to follow the player and also keep it so that it keeps it in the important area so I don't want the player to always be in the middle but if you if you really want that you can also do that you can put 0 and 0 over here and now when you move the player it will always be in the center but you want to gradually you want to gradually move the player to be in the in the area of view so if the player is moving to, from left to right the the camera will gradually follow it and keeps it keep it over here and if it's moving to the other direction will gradually move and keep it over there and so in the uh, when it goes up and down and so on and you can also keep it in the middle if that's what you want if you lock the X then uh, when uh, when you move left and right it will not move but it, if you move right and up and down it will move and if you lock the Y then it will be the other way around you don't move up and down but you move left and right and uh, let's disable locking over here um, if you disable smooth uh, smooth movement now it will it will kind of jump to the position where uh, where it is but you actually see this better in in uh, in corona in the game itself or in preview um, 
So as you can see, it moves and it follows the object itself. And now, another uh, issue that Jason had was understanding the game world. So let's enable game world, and I have this area over here. So I'm making it a little bit bigger. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Now, if I go to preview, as you can see, nothing really. It's there's nothing obvious going on over here because the game world is really big. I have nothing from here to here and from here uh, down. So let's actually restrict to game world the camera. And what I want is to capture in the game world to have only the part that I want to display to the user. I don't want the user to see whatever is from this point to uh, going forward, forward and from this point going uh, going down because I have no assets over here. I have no art. The, uh, the, the player should not see that area. It's not important for him to see. So I want to restrict the user from seeing that. So if I go to preview now as you can see over here to the bottom, the camera doesn't go below uh, uh, after that point. So it keeps the camera in place so that the user doesn't see something uh, that is uh, that it's not there. And of course, let me save this uh, my tutorial, and uh, that should explain. Um, how to clone, how to snap, and how to use the camera and what you can do with it. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.